Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eva and I'm a comic artist based in Singapore. So today I'm going to share with you about me and Chinese metaphysics. Uh, the reason why is because if you remember my first video about me explaining why I am no longer making new books, it's because of bad luck. So there were a few comments from people who wanted me to you know, contact them if I need help uh, to improve my uh, luck. And so I thought, oh, okay, so I have some, uh, a few, uh, at least a few uh, readers uh, who uh, are into this uh, Chinese metaphysics, what we call Chinese metaphysics, like feng shui and ba zi. So for those of you who don't know what they are, um, basically it's like a Chinese astrology. Um, and uh, actually feng shui and ba zi are kind of different. Uh, feng shui is more about the environment where we live in or work in. It's more of the environment like the, play, the direction of your bed or your door or your stove. And uh, ba zi is more about like your life destiny. So uh, it's not about the environment, but a lot of people don't know about ba zi. They only know about feng shui. So they categorize everyone as learning feng shui or feng shui masters, but actually they are kind of different. If you're a ma feng shui master, you would know some, you would be uh, well, uh, you know, well learned in uh, ba zi because they uh, sort of they are connected so actually this they're a bit different because i didn't learn feng shui but i went to learn ba zi i have been interested in astrology for since uh, when i was a teenager the first time i learned uh, about this uh, astrology is actually through my friend and she was teaching uh, me and my other classmate uh, Zi Wei Dou Shu, which is another kind of Chinese astrology based on stars in the sky. Um, but I, I thought it was too difficult. So I actually gave up after some, uh, some time. And uh, yeah, so I sort of believe in it uh, on and off because when I went to see a master in Taiwan, because actually Taiwan, uh, a lot of Taiwanese believe in this uh, astrology readings and feng shui so um, they have some masters masters over there and i actually went to uh, through my friend's recommendation i went to see a master in taiwan and she uh, gave me like annual readings so um so i did that for a few years but i found that it's not that accurate so after that, I think it's not really, you know, it's like a 50% accurate thing. So I stopped believing in it until, uh, you know, my bad luck with making books. Uh, I was in another house. It's not this house. Uh, this is actually my family house. I was in my sister's house back then. And uh, so basically, uh, I had, I, I didn't. I, I, um, as you know, if you watch my first video, which uh, I, I might leave a link in the description below. Um, whenever I, I came up with books, uh, there's some bad luck with like the currency or some distribution issue, uh, debt collection issue, uh, and then of course the COVID issue. So there's a lot of uh, external factors that affected the sales of the book and it went downhill, down, down, down. And I became poorer and poorer and poorer. So in fact, while making the books for about six, seven years, my I didn't have much savings and I let alone investments. So I was like not in good shape. So that's why at that time I thought, well, I mean, maybe it's the feng shui of this place because before I moved to my sister's uh, um, place, a uh, house, I was doing okay. It wasn't that bad. Um, but everything like health and wealth went downhill ever since I moved to her place. So I started to watch this Taiwanese variety show called Feng Shui You Guan Xi, which loosely translated as uh, Feng Shui Matters, or there's, it's related to Feng Shui. So um, this variety show is like a weekly show where uh, like a, they, they will bring, uh, they will consult like three feng shui masters and uh, they will bring uh, one master 
in each episode, they will bring one master uh, to a house visit to improve the feng shui of that that person's uh, house. And I watched like uh, every episode for a, a few years because I was thinking, well, it sounds like my place feng shui is really terrible. And that is why, okay, they, their system is kind of different. So they, they buy a lot of like trinkets and that's when I found out about those little feng shui items like uh, pi xiu, qi ling cai ba gua, wu di qian, wen chang ta, etc. If you don't know what they mean, basically it's like these little um, charms or, you know, uh, thing um, that you hang around or you put in your place to improve the feng shui or to block a sha qi. So sha qi is actually loosely translated as poison arrow, which is uh, something that is bad for your house. For example, like a sharp edge that points to your door or, um, uh, or what else? Like uh, there's different sha qi, like wind sha and whatnot. And uh, basically you can put these things around the house and they must be cut, they must be blessed. So uh, in Chinese, it's called kai guang, which are like these uh, little red dots uh, called zhu sha. So basically they dot and then it's supposed to become magical. So I bought this and then there's, there's a gourd as well. And uh, there's, uh, I bought crystals as well. I mean, if I can find the photo, I'll just put it in here right now. But I was so crazy into the feng shui items. And this one is the last remaining crystal ball I have. It's actually citrine, I think. So it even has a pyramid. Oh, where is the pyramid? Okay. You can, can you see the pyramid? <laughs> okay. Okay. Py pyramid. So this with pyramid... Um, cost more money and I think I spent like $170 on this which is like uh, OMG like I think I spent like nearly $2,000 or so on these feng shui items because they're really expensive and I also bought this uh, Super 7 bracelet in Chinese it's called Chao Qi and it's uh yeah I bought it from the same shop as as this so actually there were a lot more but they were disposed of they were probably uh, they were either resold or oh no wait these are these are blessed so i have to dispose them uh, properly like with chance and burning talisman all that so yeah so there were a lot more and these were the last remaining few so what happened uh was that i i moved house so i don't really need these anymore because the new place i could just start from scratch and because we renovated the entire place so um and also another reason is i don't find them use useful <laughs> they're not useful at all uh my luck didn't really improve by much and i spent so much money i i watched like the variety show i watch live streams selling these things and i uh i think they're they're useless yeah, so I, I think some people believe in it and that's good for you. And But for me, I find them useless. So that's when I found, um, I think because I was into these things, so uh, Facebook fed me some recommendations. And at that time, there was a Malaysian master who was conducting online classes in 2019. I won't say his full name because if you're, a, you're also a feng shui enthusiast you would know who he is i'll just say his initials is jy he's from malaysia and uh, i found his videos so um so so intriguing and interesting and at that time uh he also talked about these uh, feng shui items and he said that they're useless too so i think I agree with him. Actually, I use them for Chinese New Year decoration now, so that's why they are still around. <laughs> I only put them up during Chinese New Year. Okay, so basically he said that these are useless and the real real feng shui is actually through um, the directions, the timing, it's about the energies of the you know the star and the earth, I mean the, the galaxy, the earth and yourself. So I think, wow, it uh, seems like a... Seems like a good, uh, you know, uh, 
top like knowledgeable master so he was running online classes at that time and i was like trying to seek out answers to why i have such a bad luck with books so i actually subscribed to his class and uh, attended his online class and um because it was like unlimited playback so i wasn't that rich so i, I only attended the basic parts class and there was this uh ticket to the convention the course itself was pretty good i learned a lot but um some parts were not good like um we, if you have questions you you sort of can only ask through email and uh there's like a live live q a question but i think there were like thousands of students and maybe thousands of students online at one time and there was only one instructor ask uh answering all the questions so he was very rushed and there was no use of whiteboard or anything written he was just like what i'm doing right now talking and answering questions and when you send in emails you cannot uh, you know you cannot point out the chart because it was not that easy um to learn like when i when we ask questions like um we we might cross reference all over the place and you can't do that with uh, the email just text so I tried and it's very competitive because there's thousands of students and so they only pick a few hundred questions to be answered or maybe a hundred over questions I forgot but uh, it was very competitive so once they say that you can ask questions you have to quickly email your question in else your question will not be picked so and and yeah, so it was very competitive and I had to send in questions really fast. And when it was answered online live, uh, it wasn't answered very well. Yeah, so I was kind of disappointed in it. But I was look, uh, I was thinking, okay, maybe the event will be good. So I went to the event uh, and I met other people as well. And also we had the same problem. Like we don't get our questions answered. And so I tried to ask uh, one of the uh, their staff at the site because uh, we, when you're there you can actually ask one of their um, uh, teachers or consultants they call it consultants so you can ask one of their consultants at the event uh, if you have questions so I try to locate one to ask and they're also very busy because remember there are like hundreds of people all dying to get their questions answered so I I uh, tried to ask him like uh, am I like no affinity with books is that why you know I have no luck with books and will my last book which is the fourth book uh, will do well I of course he is more knowledgeable than me but I don't think he's that experienced because what I said he tried to like dig out like you know like half convincingly you know like oh you you can do books if you blah 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 yeah maybe you can try this blah 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 and he was also in such a rush to answer my question just like the instructor online so i didn't really have a very good answer from him and i also don't find him experience at that time i was also keen in learning uh, another system called qimen dunjia and uh it's usually used for a business because you can use it to do divination which means uh, like a forecasting like if I for example uh, if I uh, partner with this person will my business become profitable or if I hire this person will he bring profits to me or uh, if I um, do this or that will it uh, you know uh, make my business more money or will it be smooth sailing will it be successful or what timing or direction you can use to improve your chances of getting a deal a business deal in the olden days it's used for war to predict or to um, decide when to attack the opponent so i met this la lady at the event and uh, she picked up qimen dunjia from this uh from the teacher jy and so i asked if it was useful for her and she said yeah it's kind of useful she made profits using this system so i decided to uh, also learn 
奇门遁甲 as well. But I don't want to be online class again. So I wanted to look for a teacher that has a real life class, a person to person, so I can ask questions because I believe that is one of the ways to learn and remember better. So I decided to、uh, look for a master in Singapore that teach、uh, 奇门遁甲 and at that time, through、um, uh, my my ex colleague, I I I later found out that his wife teaches 奇门遁甲 and so I enrolled into her class. And、uh, I found her teaching very good because she was a design graphic designer, so her materials are very easy to understand and they look visually、uh, nice. I think it really makes me understand better and remember better because of the color coding and the design. So、um, I really liked her class.、Uh, the first class I went to was divination, and then the second class she has was about destiny. Which is very similar to Zi Ping Ba Zi, ah,、uh, but it's Qi Men Ba Zi. So you might be、uh, wondering what is Ba Zi. Basically, it's like the four pillars. Okay, I'm not gonna go in too deep into that. But、uh, basically, ah,、uh, you have other animal signs in your chart other than the year that you were born in. Another、uh, reason why I started to make YouTube this year is also because I'm born in the year of Rooster. And rooster combined with dragon, as you know, this year is the year of dragon, and they produce、uh, another element called metal. So,、uh, if you know Chinese, you know rooster and dragon is a kind of liu he, and they produce metal, which is, which happens to be my、uh, wealth element. So this year, I am encouraged to go out more, like、uh, network. Events,、uh, yeah, make YouTube videos and things like that. So, yeah, so it's actually based on the bats. <laughs> yeah.、Well, finally, did I find my answers on why I had so much bad luck doing books in Chinese astrology or Chinese metaphysics? And my answer is yes and no, because、uh, remember the first class I went to was with. Uh, ba zi, zi ping ba zi, with、uh, the master who was based in Malaysia, and it was all online. So I have no one to ask questions with, and so my understanding of that system is like half bucket.、Uh, so I also didn't really find、uh, questions on why I, I why this is happening in my ba zi because you know the the consultants were like also <laughs> not very experienced. So when I picked up Qi Men Dun Jia,、um, I did ask my teacher directly because remember it was a live person-to-person -person class, and she gave me some answers、uh, based on my chart、uh, that is more convincing than the other class, and I, we sort of conclude that I don't really have luck with books,、um, but if you if I work on things that are digital based. Or technology based, it's better. And I was thinking how about ebook, but my ebook sales honestly wasn't that great, <laughs> so it's 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 worse than the physical books. So I'm not sure about that, but at least I got some of my questions answered. And actually, I asked my teacher to do the feng shui of this house where I am currently living in with my fam, my mom and my. Siblings, and、um, uh, and actually, this 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 location, yeah. Oh wait, this this corner where you see a bit of a plant, this this plant. Oh wait, this this plant is actually my wealth spot, my wealth corner, and I'm supposed to put a plant there to grow my wealth.、Um, and actually, this it was this plant. This plant was there at my wealth spot. Um, it's actually a snake plant, so it has been growing pretty well.、Uh, I think my wealth also improved、uh, quite a lot after I moved into this house.、Um, I also feel happier and healthier in this house. 
um, but of course it's not smooth sailing all the way I still have my dizzy spells occasionally so uh, yeah I also had a very bad cough for six months <laughs> last year so but uh, nothing major uh, currently that's the end of my video and my sharing about me and Chinese metaphysics I hope you enjoyed the content I'll be trying to make videos about maybe two videos a month at least and uh, if you enjoy them or you would like to see any more topics please leave a comment below it helps the algorithm as well otherwise I'll see you around on my Instagram Facebook and telegram the links are all below and thank you for watching and special thanks to my patrons which I will list here as usual and have a great day bye bye